Welcome to the Friday Weekly Sports Show with myself, Jim Petruzzi, and Clifford Tyrone. Stan Peg, haven't we got an amazing show for you this evening? We've got some fascinating guests. We've got an ex-professional footballer who's played and coached at a number of teams. He's played at the likes of Bolton Wanderers, Rochdale Crew. He's coached at Manchester City. Guess who it is? He's a goalkeeper, highly rated. He's highly rated. He actually represented Wales as well. Phenomenal guest we're going to be speaking to. But before we speak to our guest, we're going to introduce you to what we've got installed on the menu today. We've got an amazing show. We're going to cover all the local sports. And we're going to also talk about international football and the Premiership Roundup too. Get in touch to Friday Weekly Sports Show. Make sure you get in touch. We've got an action-packed show lined up for you today. Clifford, how are you doing? Very excited. Very good to be here. As always, the world of sport doesn't stop. We'll be looking around the globe, but very excited this week to be looking very much closer to our own Shire here in Greater Manchester and looking at the, some of the smaller clubs and seeing what's going on. And I'm looking to see who the small-time Man City is. <laughs> we'll be looking at that very soon. Uh, yeah, so get involved at Sports Friday at the Twitter handle. It's uh, Salford City Radio here, of course, at the heart of Salford Community. Uh, we'll be getting a, a, a live guest, as we said before, but uh, the Autumn Internationals are coming to a great climax with Ireland maybe staking their claim as the number one team with uh, a victory that's starting to look like the most invincible team in the world might just be vincible if there's such a thing uh, <laughs> uh, the All Blacks beaten again by Ireland and uh, if you didn't know about Johnny Sexton perhaps uh, at the moment the greatest number 10 he's been going under the radar but uh, he's without doubt every game he's played he's not lost this season He's, uh, his stats are incredible. He does everything. And again, the All Blacks give him a stand innovation as they walked off the pitch. So uh, plenty of stuff to look at. Uh, just caught the, 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 the Pep Guardiola the podcast as well. Uh, it was music-based, but he was talking about his life and he considers himself a Mancunian now. Uh, but I just like... Uh, pause for thought on that. Was it? It's nice to see the good guys winning for once. And he's undoubtedly one of the good guys. Um, uh, Great what he's doing there. I'm a red, but I have to salute that he's obviously making football beyond doubt an art form. Um, pains me to say it, but uh, he is doing something quite remarkable. Oh, he definitely is, and for sure, it's, it's an amazing job he's doing over at City, that's for sure. And before we sort of move on to the roundup, we've got a guest, an interesting guest today. Before we uh, talk to our other guest, which is back in the UK doing some coaching, we're going to touch on. A really interesting concept now these days we more and more things are going online and I think that the online community gives people an opportunity to get involved in sports and other things as well and and just build a social network because obviously it's not always easy to get and about and we can sort of do uh, stuff online as well as you know getting out into the to big wide world too so we've got a really fascinating guest who's created an amazing concept Ian, Ian Foran, welcome to the show. Tell us a bit about this football man cave that you've uh, developed. How are you doing, Jimmy? All right, mate? Yeah, good. Um, yeah, so basically I started, started it about three months ago, four months ago. The idea came to me about a year, year and a half ago when I was uh, I was football writing, concentrating on the top six teams. And it was monotonous. To be fair, it was the same old stuff, same old transfer news, blah, blah, blah. And I've got, got a real passion me for lower league. I'm a United supporter. Used to be an next season ticket holder and all that malarkey, but um, the lower leagues, especially the passion, fascinates me. Um, non leagues, under leagues, you know, your Manchester leagues and stuff like that. Were you tempted to start with FC United then? I was uh, very tempted to start with them, but um, I didn't want to be biased. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a case of let's have a look at the, the great Manchester teams, um, more so the great Manchester Borough, because obviously. You, people sort of get a little bit mixed between Lancashire teams and so we sort of had the Greater Manchester Borough so we've got 13 teams to sort of cover um, but we have to have a cut off point because once you get past like the National League North the team just expand and expand and you've, you've got so many so we ended up having a cut off at National League North I mean what it's to sort of bring bring the sort of focus as much to say United and City and Premier League as to Ashton United and Altrincham in the National League North and it was it's something that's it's not really about it's not it's not really you don't really see much of stories or previews or transfer gossip and you know that type of stuff within them teams and um, I think there's a massive emphasis at the minute on like 
like you have your non-league day. Uh, grassroots football is getting a lot of attention with Richard Scudamore recently, you know, with parachute payments and all that malarkey. Once you get past that championship, I think them teams struggle. Not so much for exposure, but it's like they're forgotten about a little bit and many people wouldn't really... I didn't really know anything about Ashley United. They even though it existed, to be honest, until like May, April last year, uh, this year. So it's just making people more aware, trying to bring something a little bit different, bringing it from the fans as well because we've, our writers are all fans season ticket holders people that are like volunteers at the club so we've got people that are really involved and I think it's just something you can feel that passion when they're, when they're writing So I think you're right it's definitely growing in popularity This I think there's just this need for all of us to get back to the local this yeah. global thing is obviously it's, it's, been, it's been overrated and people yeah. are sick of it and and there's stories in, in every level the same stories of, of uh, amazing achievement uh, and uh, uh, anger, hurt, fear, all the, all the same yeah. human conditions. Um, yeah. So you brought together all of these small clubs under one umbrella because that's yeah. the thing. Where do I go to find out? Like, yeah. There could be some. Give me now off the top of your head a great story going on in one of the, the lower leagues. Um, yeah, you put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oldham. I mean, I mean Curzon Ashton, actually, before I get to Oldham. But um, Curzon Ashton uh, are currently doing um, the volunteers for Christmas Day. So they're opening up the, the ground. And people who haven't got nowhere to go or haven't got nowhere to share Christmas with, they're hosting that um, on Christmas Day, which I think is an amazing story. Um, Oldham have, have, have recently just started to they broke today with some some news. Um, it, I think the clubs are trying to get the the community feel like Berry are really behind trying to get the fans down. Obviously, mm-hmm. they're doing amazing at the minute, but they're doing constant events. They're doing. Um, like trying to get people in the social club beforehand and you can see when you start accessing on Twitter and having a look you can sort of see these clubs trying to bring that community feel especially towards Christmas as well Yeah, no, definitely, I, I agree uh, Ian, I think that the non-league is, is you know, there's a true passion about playing in the lower leagues and non-league and certainly my involvement in Bay Cup this year, I, I made my return into the footballing world after a few years absence at working at team level, and it's great to be back. And so the passion is is amazing. And our next guest, ironically, had a stint in non-league, and according to information sources, uh, our next guest was was one of his best performances was for Lee RMI against Fulham in the 1988, 1998, sorry, 99, an FA Cup match at Craven Cottage which uh, I believe that Lee drew one all against the South uh, London Club. A performance that even Kevin Keegan, according to sources on the uh, internet, uh, said that the keeper's performance was the best he'd seen at any level. So we're going to have him on the show shortly. I'm not going to give his name away just yet. But I say that and I mention that story because there's so much talent in the uh, non-league. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and many years ago, ironically enough, when I was doing some work in London, I was sort of consulting in London, doing some physical and mental training. And whilst I was working in London, uh, doing conditioning work as a freelance consultant uh, with different players from different teams, there was one player who had made his way back in the professional league and he, he got a contract with Crystal Palace. And I, I sort of took him under my wing, so to speak, if you want to call it that, doing one-to-one training, uh, more around the physical aspects of the game. But he'd been released from the pro league and, and I, I, I think if memory serves me correct, he got released, he was playing with Clivero. And he got spotted by Palace, who were back then in, in, in the Premier League, um, and and he got given the opportunity to stake a claim. That was Carlo Nash, by the way, um, who who isn't on the show today. It's a different kid we've got today, <laughs> but it goes to show. I've always sort of teased the audience a little bit, but it goes to show that you know this was years ago. Obviously, um, you know, back in 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 the mid to late nineties, and I was working as a consultant at a conditioning centre just outside London in Surrey, and we were training players from all over the place. And I, I use a story because you know Nash would come in for some extra training with me um, around weights and strength training I know you're sort of uh, uh, you know really really keen training yourself and for me it's like the players have got to go away and find some time if they can to train yeah. to build their strength and certainly with Nash he'd come in would hit the gym do strength training and it helped a lot and just sort of I know you're doing this sort of stuff as well the internet but I, I, I know you as well as, as, as a trainer too and yeah. do, do you sort of how important do you think the physical side is in the game these days from, from your perspective you know the, the players and do you know what I mean you, you sort of see you've sort of seen the, the players evolve do you know what I mean the they're not just like United's 
footballer where it was not so much Sunday league but it was just a case of rock up have a game a few pints after match happy days now it is it is nailed down into that sports science and like yeah. they, they're on the verge of like, like Ronaldo's probably your, your greatest sort of example the the perfect aren't in the way they look do you know in the way they look after themselves see total barely go out do you know like everything's so like on point like the timing of food when they train rest they're, like, they're nearly the m- ultimate physical specimens yeah, yeah. every element of their yeah. existence what they put in their body what they do with their body is measured yeah and th- there's no real toxins or no there's, there's, there's nothing to, to, to waver from that perfection no and it is it's all in aid of obviously progressing mm. making themselves the best that they can possibly be ultimately earning as much money as they can yeah the money's driven it yeah. and the margins being so tight yeah. does this filter down to the lower leagues how, how much of this professionalism has, has filtered Do down you know to say what? yeah you see a lot of it I, I was I was actually quite shocked um, well you mean they put lemonade in the beer yeah <laughs> <laughs> diet lemonade as well <laughs> um, no I was actually quite shocked at really uh, yeah because they don't have the funds and they yeah. don't necessarily have the time no you know, and, and at that level, they, they've got other what they have to work as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, working, yeah, working in and out of, of Saturday football. Okay, and, and we speaking of uh, non-league football and professional football. Uh, we have a guest on. Uh, I've mentioned before, who's going to be talking about um, uh, a number of aspects of his career, and and we mentioned earlier that um, you know, in terms of playing careers, just about played. Uh, for, at, at every level really which is really really fascinating and we're very uh, fortunate to have you on, on board the show uh, Dave Felgate, welcome to the show welcome to the Salford City Weekly Sports Show Yeah, hi Jim, thank you Yeah, no, um, I was just saying before David, you know, you've had a number of highlights in your career, you've, you've played at Bolton Wanderers, Rochdale, Crew. you've been a number of teams, now you find yourself in the uh, non-league. We've just been talking about players' fitness, and you know you've worked at the academy at uh, Man City. Um, you know how much time and effort goes into becoming physically strong and fit. And just out of interest, we're having this conversation here about the the how far the ca- the game has gone from a physical point of view. Um, you've been a player. You've played um, in in different generations of football. How far do you think the game has come along from a physical perspective? Um, uh, it's come a massive way, really. Um, compared to when we first started, it was, uh, it was a narrow, an hour and a half training. Um, now it's you do your activation before going out with the sports science guy. He, then we train, then we go back in, we eat properly, and then there's gym sessions in the afternoon. So fitness-wise, it's it's at a peak. Oh, it's not. Yeah, no, definitely, and uh, that's really interesting stuff. And in terms of the uh, the, the, the non-league, how, how I mean, we, we see, I mean, you've played in the FA Cup for yeah. Lee. I think they were in the non-league at the time against Fulham, and uh, you know, I'm, I think that uh, I'm pretty sure Kevin Keegan said it was one of the best performances he's seen uh, of a keeper. What's what's the difference between say um, non-league fitness and levels of intensity to the professional league? Yeah, it's different in the sense of when when you can only commit to training a Tuesday and a Thursday night, um, then obviously your fitness levels are going to sort of wane somewhat. Um, the, the thing is, with, the, with, the, with the nowadays with a lot of the kids, a lot of the guys, is they actually look after themselves, uh, go to the gym when they need to be. So they really sort of do uh, help themselves, but. You know, it's difficult when you are at a club like Makeup when you're only allocated uh, an hour on, say, an AstroTurf or a pitch for to train the, to train the guys. It's, it is difficult. Yeah, no, I can imagine, and, and it's not easy. And obviously the players don't always turn up for training and that sort of stuff. And the, That's the other thing, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's just frustrating the thing where it's, it's difficult to get the team uh, organised and, and certainly playing team shape and the physical side of the game and, and that sort of stuff. And, you know, I mean, we, we sort of look at City at the moment and uh, in one sense you were sort of part of that City revolution, um, Dave. And what was your impression when sort of the changes came about City? I mean, you're, you're, you're working with some of the most promising uh, athletes or goalkeepers in the country. Uh, what was your impression at the time when some of the changes were being made at, the, uh, at City? Yeah, well, you know, I, was, I was fortunate, honoured really to, 
to be involved with City from when they were down at Platt Lane. Um, and there wasn't that many, there wasn't that many coaches there, uh, staff-wise. But yet we created um, a vast amount of players progressing through to the to the first team. The, the game has changed now. Um, you know, the, the 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 place obviously with the injection of of uh, of money into the building, and um, I mean, obviously. Um, we 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 played off a really really small budget when we were there, and obviously the budget now um, is is astronomical really to to bring try and bring players through. Yeah, no, definitely, and and that's a sign of the changes in in, in football. And mm. in in terms of um, your own experience, I know you went abroad to to China. What was the experience like over there, Dave? The um, eye opening, to say the least. Uh, it was. I was fortunate because I went over to uh, to Shanghai and worked with Shanghai SIPG for their under 21s. Um, and it's obviously, if you know, if you know anything about Shanghai, it's probably the the most uh, the richest club in in sort of China with regards uh, with regards to players. I mean, I think Oscar and and the Hulk think around six hundred thousand a week. Uh, wow. Which tells you tells you why they went over there in the first place. Um, so facility wise, it, it wasn't bad, uh, but they they they're craving at this moment in time to uh, to try and inject um, more into into the world football. They're trying to trying to promote China a lot better, and we were fortunate we went over there. Um, they they are similar to to Man City in the sense of. Keeping hold of players, I think players sign their 18 for five years, mm. which you know sometimes is unheard of in this country. When I played, it was it was a year to year contract. Mm. Nowadays, mm. people sign five years on quite lucrative amounts of money, which they did pay. Um, the dif- the difference that we noticed as British coaches was obviously the food. The food was totally different. Mm. Um, where we would. We used to more pasta, chicken, uh, etc. They were they were on totally different things, and it was, you you know you just thought well, that that can't be healthy or that can't be that can't be good. But they they thrived off it. Yeah, no, I think that you know that's what you're sort of accustomed to as well. And yeah. I think, but it, I, I suppose it sort of takes me back years ago in this country too, in the UK. Uh, Dave, when I sort of first started working in conditioning work and performance work in the UK, yeah, there was still that sort of mentality in the mid uh, 90s where the players weren't eating the way that they start to eat with the influx. I'm not saying it was all down to the European coaches, but certainly some of the European I coaches. Think that helped. It, it brought some new ideas, and, and, and obviously yourself as a player um, will probably um, you know remember back in the day where. Nutrition wasn't as big a part as it sort of is now. I mean, you know, now everything's sort of measured and, and calculated. And did you see any any major changes in the nutritional side of things from when you first started playing as a pro and years yeah, later? Yeah, of course. Yeah, we. I think you know, the, one of the first people to, to to sort of change the outlook when I was at Bolton was was, was Bruce Rick. He, he introduced uh, water, bringing water into the for the, so the lads could drink at least two liters of water. Yeah. Um, you know, we know we we wouldn't do it. We'd probably just drink tea or coffee or something like that. Or it wasn't it wasn't thought of as that kind of stuff. The introduction of of pasta. Uh, I can remember going when I was when I was when I was earlier in my career at Bolton. We used to have um, steak for for pre match steak and, and yeah, yeah. vegetables and potatoes and oh, that's just frowned upon now. You would never do that now. Yeah. yeah, no, no, definitely, and no, I could imagine the, the sports scientist <laughs> wouldn't be too too pleased about that. That's for sure, and, no. and and definitely everything sort of calculated after the game. You've got to have something to eat within the hour, the window, and build the glycogen stores up, and everything's really really measured. And a lot of the yeah. training these days is you've got obviously some high tech equipment, uh, which sort of gives you an idea of what levels the players are, are are training at and that sort of stuff. And I can imagine in a non league, that's one of the challenges. Dave, where the the understanding what what levels the players are and sort of getting a session to make sure all the players are working at an optimum level, um, do, yeah. do you, it's probably one of the, the challenges too. And, and speaking of non league, you know, Bake Up, um, it's a fantastic club. Obviously, I'm involved in the club myself too, and mm-hmm. I really enjoy uh, being there. Brent 
is is you know one of a kind really in 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 a non-league and you know he wears his heart in his sleeve and it's not easy in non-league it's it's hard to balance the books and we sort of talk a lot about the premiership and the abundance of riches in some of the biggest teams in the premiership and tell us a bit about you know so so people know firsthand what it's like to work in a non-league environment uh they what's the what are the challenges to, to work in the non-league I think you mentioned earlier on, Jim. I think it's the it's the availability of some players to come turn up to training. Yeah. Um, you know, through through um, locations where they where they work to get to where we are. I think what we what we found we had to do was move sort of closer to sort of the Manchester area because we have a uh, an influx of players coming from Manchester or work in Manchester. So. Finding venues is, is is another is another thing which is difficult because you know sometimes you you, you you have a free week and you can book a Tuesday or a Thursday. Some days you you'll play on a Tuesday, so you can only have a Thursday. So you have to work things around that. Yeah, no, no, definitely, and I think that you know certainly that's one thing for sure in in, in the professional game. I'm not saying that's taken for granted, but you know, you turn up and and you know the players you've got on deck, and you can sort of do your team shape, and you can do a lot of the training that you set out to do, which makes uh, life a bit easy. But you know, non-league, it is what it is, and players have got jobs and other lives as well, and it's, it's not easy yeah. uh, for them. But you know, certainly Bake Up, it's just a good young squad, and uh, I'm, I'm you know certainly from what I've seen, I'm confident the lads uh, can can kick on. And how do you think the season's gone there so far? They was just sort of yeah, the impression thus far. It, it was it was interesting for me because obviously dipping my toes back into into sort of the non-league scene I wasn't sure what to expect so uh, really the first month or so into the into the season I'm still learning and, and to be honest Jim I'm still learning now um, so it was a case of running and uh, running ahead of myself and looking at games where we thought uh, we could pick points up we knew there was a we had a difficult start with some uh Experienced and teams that were paying a little bit more for the players come to us. Um, we knew we were challenging, but I always believed that once we, once we sort of got through that that period, there was get there was games where we could were winnable. And mm-hmm. the, you know, I think the lads have been brilliant. They sort of bought into this. Um, you know, we're trying to sort of create uh, this no excuse um, environment, really. That you know, players have to turn up for training. Players turn up for matches. I know it's because of it's non-league they have to find their own way to, to grounds and stuff like that and as luck would have it there's only a few distance games should we say that uh, there's a little bit of travelling involved um, so you know in that sense we're, we're, we're quite fortunate yeah, you know definitely you know lads are certainly you know, show a lot of commitment and, and desire and, and certainly um, they give it a good go they go out there and I think for me the, 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 the squad the the, it's a young squad, and obviously, experience is, is a big thing. And you know, certainly, I think in in any sport, uh, experience is is you can't sort of substitute experience. It takes time. You learn from your losses. You learn from your wins. Even um, it's a journey, and and from there you sort of grow. Um, for yourself as a professional, you sort of played professional. Did you find yourself there were sort of pivotal moments in your career, Dave, where you kind of learnt? And and I mean, you obviously played. Yeah international level as well you got a cap too so yeah. did you find there was yeah. sort of yeah yeah we were lucky I mean I was I was lucky really because you know there's, there's a saying isn't it that you know without failing you're never going to go forward so yeah I've, I've made mistakes I've made mistakes uh, in playing and I've made mistakes uh, coaching but you know you, you have to be open minded enough to understand what you're trying to achieve and, and go forward I just think that um, I'm learning I'm I'm really enjoying what I'm doing I think that the lads have taken on board what we what we're trying to achieve here um, you, you, you know Brent Brent is just 100% make it more um, you know and I think it's, it's not about it's not about uh, you know payments and things like that it's about the clubs actually wanting to play for make it more mm. Definitely, very much so, and that's the thing too. It's a, it's a massive opportunity, I think, to to work with uh, people like yourself and Brent uh, Peters, some experienced uh, footballing people, and for any young player, for me to have the opportunity to work with yourself, um, Dave, who's sort of coached at City Academy, who's been a professional player for a number of years, uh, you know, Brent Peters, who knows the game inside out. I, I find myself as a coach uh, learning so much from you guys. I can imagine a player 
who's starting their, their, their way in the world can, can learn. And it's just taking it all in and, and, and not taking it for granted. And, and not saying the players do that, but certainly for me, uh, if I was a young player starting out and I had the likes of yourself, coaching and Brent, I'd be asking questions as often as I could to learn and, and, and get an idea of what I need to do to improve my game. And that's the big thing yeah. for me. I think sometimes, um, you know, the, the humbleness of people like yourself who say they're learning now, um, it sort of plays these as I think sometimes just having that open mind to, to learn and, and not think they know it all is, is a big thing. And you, I, I certainly feel in my experience that that stresses across the board in, in a lot of sports these days where you know yeah. certain players they sort of think they know it all they get the one year contract they think they're on the way um, and, and you know you can be gone as quickly as you in this game as you all know, yeah, you know? that's true I mean I've I've seen numerous players who uh, turn up at Manchester City and <clears throat> they sign they sign the first two year deal and think and, and really really simply they have made it they've made they're making a lot of money um but then, where's the pathway for them? You know, pathways uh, isn't there a lot of the times. Um, we're fortunate, I mean, obviously, because where we are at Baker, obviously yourself, myself, uh, Brent, we're quite open-minded about this, and the door's always open, so if there's any problems, just come and speak, and that's that's what the, the lads tend to do nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we are... We, how can I say? We, we we're learning, and obviously, it, I'm learning the man the man management side of it as well. I think I've been quite fortunate when I played and when I coached. I coached uh, the goalkeeper, so we were really sort of we had a really sort of what what you would do as a goalkeeper's union. So we had a good relationship with people, and I think you have to have that. You have to open yourself up. Um, and you know what? To be fair, Jim. We're, never, we're not always right mm, sometimes definitely. it's nice to get somebody else going listen I don't, I'm not sure about that I don't agree with that and then sometimes you think yeah yeah you got a point actually that's yeah, you know you're right there mm. and, and we can move we can move along together so no no definitely that's what we need to do no no yeah, I, I like agree I said to you before there's, there was opportunities when you know you're at the game obviously because of my sort of um, experience in the non-league it's nice to come and ask you questions because, you know, when I ask you, how, what do you think we did? How do you think we did? This? Um, what can we do better? If you're, you're open to give me information, which we take on board. So there's no sort of dictatorship there anymore. It's just a case of everybody sort of learning and wanting to go mm-hmm. go forward. No, very much so. Very much. That's a fascinating insight, uh, Dave. Thanks for your time, and, and no doubt we'll sort of catch up soon. Thanks again, uh, Dave. Yeah, much appreciate. No problem. All the best, mate. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Jim. Take Thank care, you. mate. Bye-bye. Bye. This is your award-winning community radio station, Salford City Radio. Welcome back here live, and we've still got our live studio guest who's taken the time to do all the hard running, to gather all of the stories from the lower league, which I'm very much looking forward to because there was nowhere to go previously that everyone knew immediately to find out what's going on. Um, and So, yeah, let's get back to talking about the lower leagues. yeah. Um, so, what is your favourite club so far? I mean, just, just just to say, if you're thinking about going to your local club, you, yeah. can, you can recommend it because Manchester United, for us, when, when I was a lad, it was a community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a local club, and that's gone for sure. It's, it's there's a, so much distance, I yeah. think. Um, yeah, the disenchantment in the day. It, yeah. It's at the forefront of business now, it's yeah. a global business. You, you can feel it when you, when you go to. I went to Ashton United a couple of weeks back, and it was literally. You're there on the pitch. You can listen. You can, you can hear every tackle, every ball. Sort of, you can hear the players. You can have a pint in the stands. You know, it's, you feel the togetherness. Yeah, you're a part of it. Yeah, and then you go to United and you, you slung up in Sir Alex Ferguson stand and you, you're watching it. And after people around you sat there, not really doing much. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's, it's not a collaborative United, you know, experience, you know, is it? Not like it used to be. Like it's, it, it sounds crazy because it's. What 2018, but it, it used to be such a great atmosphere, and to to get a decent atmosphere at United now, it's, it's tough. It's, it's a tough, tough got to be a big, big game. Oh, I went to the semi final. I've been for 20 years. Went to the semi final of Europa Cup last year. Fellaini scored. It was dead. Yeah, that, I mean, it was dead. Let's not get too much into that. Yeah, we'll we're be going get... down a horrible oh. rabbit hole there, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> I did, I, I did, I'll be honest, I, I cheated and I, I joined the Wigan Revolution 15 years ago. My friend's a big Wigan fan. Yeah. And the joy I got from walking through the streets uh, from Wigan, even when they played away, though, at Cambridge. Yeah. Uh, and, and so I'm imploring people to go and find the local 
the club. I got yeah. so much out of that experience, even as a bit of a of an interloper. Yeah. Well, that's it. Like I say, when you go to say Stockport, Altrincham, yeah, even Salford City and Curzon Ashton, Ashton United, FC United, that that club means everything to that fan. If you're not like, it's not just a or oh, watch them on telly or. Mm. You know, it's like armchair fans as, as it's called and stuff like that. It's, it's a case of they go down, they pay their eight, nine, ten, twelve quid or whatever it is, and every single penny they're putting into that, every pie, every brew they, they buy, they know it's going straight into that club. And it's that that community and that togetherness that is is something completely different when you go to a match compared to your Premier League Championship. Mm. No, no, you're right. I, I agree, and that's one of the things that we we sort of mindful of uh, this show, the weekly sports show. We really want to make sure that. Or oh, Friday weekly sports show. We want to make sure that we involve the local community. It's a big thing, like you say, and it's it's huge. And you know, Clifford and myself have touched on it on a number of occasions that sport galvanises the community. Yeah. If you've got you know young people getting involved in sport, they're doing something. They're out there. Um, it's got a, a feel good factor. And certainly in this uh, environment, in this area, there's no shortage of sporting talent across every code, across a lot of codes. And for me, it's it's, it's not just about being a uh, professional sports person about sort of getting out there on the Sunday Sunday league but like this is a really important point you make there about the, the money that goes into the non-league it sort of keeps them going and yeah. I, I don't think people know uh, just how difficult it is to keep the, 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 the books balanced at the yeah. non-league is people do so much work for next to nothing I don't know if um, you said sorry yeah. if you said uh, the Akron and Stanley chairman put up on Twitter the other day of the recent bands on match that they hosted and um, he literally put like a statement of the financial of like this is what wow. we've got to pay out this is how much we earned that day and like as as, as transparent as you possibly could and it was you watch and you think but well, they're really like every pint is 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 profit for them you, you, yeah. you've looked at the 13 clubs yeah uh, is it day-to-day survival yeah literally uh, pr- pretty much for, for more of the, the national national league north um they heavily rely on volunteers Massively, uh, we've got a, a writer on who's a volunteer at Ashley United, and um, like he's like the, the groundsman. So if he don't turn up, the ground's not sorted out. If you, if you know I me, mean, obviously they've got a team of them, but he's a vital part of of that team. So it's it's really reliant on people just wanting to give their time. And what what you've had chance to, to, to get to get to know these clubs, and, you, and you've spoken to the chairman. Um, we know that Scudamore's just had a five million walk away gift and we know yeah. Gordon Taylor is up there with the longest running dictators if we can call them that 40 <laughs> years now and 3 million a year I know. Well, there must be exasperation at the boardroom level of these small clubs and, and did, they, did they write to the FA, did they, did they write to the PFA to ask for funds and, 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 I, think and it's, I think it's more it's like, a, it's like fighting a losing battle a little bit and they just they, they heavily rely on events or like the community, the, the people, because that money doesn't get filtered. Once it gets past the championship, you've got no chance. If you look at how many Premier League clubs fall out of the Premier League into the championship, into League One, and then they start going down that financial route, is it, it, it really hits them. Um, Stockport, I mean, if you look at Stockport County, what a late 90s with Division One as it was then, yeah, championship, yeah. Yeah. and they've been in absolute turmoil over the past sort of 10 years as such. Um, but I think they... I think it's just a case of let's just sort our own manner out and we'll work and if anything comes through if we get a big FA Cup game or the FA Trophy and I think you get like 20,000 for winning it or some check a trade trophy you know, they've just got to just put everything mm-hmm. as much mm-hmm. as they can into that Yeah I mean the thing is you know back in the day you know, I'm not sure if you're aware but you know certain teams in the Premier League would, would have games if the lower league teams and that was a, a good money spin off yeah, yeah. um, these days the, the Premier League teams they tend to play abroad in in the off season and yeah. and the pre season even they go out there and they're in the states they're in China they're across the other side of the world and you don't get the chance anymore to play against a a Chelsea United City very often and if they do play they're sending out like a team that is you know nothing. Pre- yeah. you know under twenty one team and I suppose the gesture is, is all what counts but at the end of the day um, th- this was a big opportunity for the, the the players and fans to see these players and we've talked about it before we think that. The, the, the Premier League is getting more and more away from the fans, away from just completely detached, really. And that's, that's, that is factual. It's becoming more and more and less accessible. And, and these clubs are, are, are almost like an institution yeah. in towns, and, and people have sort of built their lives around clubs, and they go watch the game. And, and the reality is, is that if you're 
want to go watch some football and you want to take your family to watch football, I mean, how realistic is it that you could sort of take a family to watch a game and, and it's going to cost you almost like a weekly wage. Yeah. The, the yeah. car park and you've got two kids, you've got the shirts and it's pretty tough going. Um, my understanding is, and I don't know the financial models that well, they don't even make a great deal from the Garrett receipts. No. Uh, a lot of their money is generated yeah. through, through TV. So you kind of wonder, why, you know, why can't they make it more accessible um, yes. for, for the fans? And that's, the, that's something that's sort of beyond me. On Clifford's point, um, do, do clubs get in touch? Well, I, I think that the, I'm certainly sure they're well aware at the highest level. Um, that's for sure. That's one thing I like about the, the spirit of this community. You got the, the the guys, the the class ninety two have gone to Salford. Yeah, yeah. And that's amazing. That that sort of created a bit of a rift, really, because you got an only club saying, "Well, they got the promised land yeah. now." And there's only so many class of ninety twos. I mean, those lads, they're they they they're local lads. They love the club. They love their football. There's only so many players like that who are going to uh, reinvest. And what have you made of Salford? You know, the, the investment there, and uh, what, what, what's sort of your take on that situation there? I know there's sort of divided camp, and you know, is it good? Is it bad? Is it? I think it can only be good, Make I mean, I went to Salford when they first took over. I went down, yeah. watched a couple of matches, as you would do as a United fan as well. You'd think, oh, let's go down there. And I remember seeing the ground, and the ground was like a proper, a proper like non-league ground. Mm-hmm. I didn't go for a couple of years then. I watched them, I watched them have the playoff semi-final win um, about three years ago. And when I took my niece, I think about two years ago, they had a friendly against Berry. So they come along anyway, they just built the new stadium. And it was like wow, this is. You can see them going somewhere, and do you know I mean for the community? Obviously, they're trying to put, trying to put as much as as they can in. They've got various teams now. Um, it isn't just a case of let's just bankroll a club and let's play football manager with them. It's a case of let's sort of get this little community going and hopefully try and have a little bit of a blueprint because obviously, if more ex players or even like fans or you know start plowing some money into the into a club everyone could be our Salford if, if, if that's what it is <laughs> uh, you know definitely and, and, and the result against uh, Shrewsbury wasn't wasn't too good no, the other night no. I mean they took him to a replay I think the confidence there to get a result there but in saying that in one respect now they can just focus on the league because they've sort yeah. of dropped back a bit in the league and obviously you know it would have been great for them to go through to the next round in the FA Cup it's not to be you've got to pick yourself up again and, and, and go again but it does show a measure how far the club has come yeah. because you're thinking, OK, can we get a result against Shrewsbury? And Shrewsbury are a league club. You yeah. know, they're, they're a club with a lot of tradition. Um, you know, Joe Hart played at uh, Shrewsbury. So they're, they're a club that's been, been there. They're, they've been there, done that. And I, I think for me, um, now they can sort of go back to the drawing board and let's put a big promotion push. But I think even, you know, with the investment, it's tough to get up into the league. It's, yeah. it's not easy. There's a lot of good teams there. And, and you've got your Harrogates, you've got your Files, you've got teams like that, to name a few. You've got teams that have been there, like he says, and done that, the Stockports of this world. But do you think they can get promoted this year? Uh, are they good enough to sort of... I, I, I probably won't say automatic promotion. I'd probably say more playoff. Um, I have seen them drop. I, I, was, I was wondering whether it was the, the new club bounce when you usually see a new club come up, say, at Huddersfield or Brighton, or new club into the Premier League. That first season, they sort of excel themselves and then they drop because obviously Salford's rise has just been like it's three in a row is it now three promotions I think it's something like that but it's it's great so I thought oh, I wonder if they're just they're dropping off now but do I mean they've got they've got a great team Adam Rooney up front's yeah they're only going in one direction with that backing yeah then that dedication and yeah. it's a shame it takes money um, but le- I want to talk more about your institution because yeah. I, we want to share in this lower league excitement and we we might just through uh, y- your hard work over the last few months get get uh, excited and, uh, and get moved to go and visit our local club so yeah. tell us how it started and and, and, and and well let's first say what is how do we find it what's it called it's what? called the football man cave um, now it is the football man cave but I put one C in the title because I think most people would would probably just put put more man cave in so <laughs> it is yeah football man cave oh so um, you mean find it easily find it easier got yes. it got <laughs> it that's the name of the game that's the one but it is man cave man cave yeah oh, so right. it just concentrates on the, the great Manchester teams um, so yeah football writer I've been a football writer for like two years and um, I wanted to I wanted to do it as a show I wanted to do it as a football show so I approached a couple of TV companies and nobody was really going for it and I thought, oh, do you know what? I'm going to start it myself and YouTube channel type thing. But I just didn't have the time to put into it. So I, I kind of left it. I had everything planned out in my, in my iPhone notes. And all there. And then um, 
I'd let it rest for like eight months, totally forgot about it to be fair. And then I was just clearing my phone out, you know, getting some storage back and stuff like that. And I found it there. And I thought, you know what, it's been perfect as a as a website. So let's just let's just go with it and let's just give it a season was, was my idea and see what happens. Um and I just I just created a website, started writing as a as I naturally would do. And doing all the legwork yourself, going to yeah. every game. No, we've been down to a couple of um, National League North games, interviewing a couple of players. Um, but majority of it's written content, so a lot of it you'll find on Twitter. Um, we're, we're sort of Twitter based more than more than Facebook. But um, it's just yeah, written content. People can sort of read articles, not just your standard match preview, mm. match result. You know what happened, blah blah blah. It's more. We've got a couple of writers on who are season ticket holders, so. Um, I'd say volunteers at the club so it's it's real fans views so you could get a feel for the club and yeah. the, and uh, the, 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 what, how they're getting on without actually visiting yeah and it, it, it's great because I like uh, today, yesterday we did like it we'd always do like a throwback Thursday so we have um, we have like a a couple of writers who've been writing for 20, 30 years and they all say come on give us give us like your greatest player or your greatest team or yeah. your greatest game or something like that and it was just something a little bit different so you can reminisce as well because I think a lot of the time you're always at the here and now and you always forget how good your team was and you don't mm. appreciate especially at a lower league level you don't appreciate that much it's always like oh god we're in like Oldham we're in league two like, like, and they're mid table at the minute but if you have to have a look you know, you're going to beat Liverpool what 10 years ago or something yeah. 9 years ago in the FA Cup but people won't really talk about that so we just try and bring someone from a different angle mm. um, instead of just your standard article stuff yeah, no, that's uh, in- interesting stuff. And and what's the feedback been so far? I mean, what's sort of what's sort of the the feedback been? Is it been uh, positive or yeah, majorly yeah. positive? Um, yeah. What we try not to do is write anything negative because obviously we want to try and promote the teams. So to sort of write uh, your, your negative slant, it's it's, mm. it's pointless. What if they've had a terrible game though? Then we'll look at somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> That's the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. we're, we're trying to build these teams up. So. Well, so you mean you do one team a week? Then you showcase. No, we, we have six to eight articles going out a day, um, and we try and cover the thirteen teams in the first. Oh, so there's daily updates. Yeah, so it's it, thorough now. It's grown yeah. into something quite yeah. considerable. It's um, we try and get as much as we can. We're on the verge of setting the podcast up, um, and we've got a YouTube channel, which is it's it's kind of there. We've got a couple of videos on there, but. We're just trying to get that ball rolling. I say we've only been 11, 12 weeks, so wow. we're still finding our feet. But we're, we're trying to get that, con- trying to find our feet more than anything. I bet this will be copied as well around the country. Yeah, um, yeah, I've, um, I thought of that. Have you already thought? <laughs> I thought of that. I was like, right, no, there's only one football man cave. Yeah. That's it. There's only one. That's the one. <laughs> Injured man. Yeah, definitely. So. Yeah, no, definitely do. Do get in touch. The Friday Weekly Sports Show on the Facebook page. Let us know what your thoughts are. We're going to talk about the international shortly. The England came back and, and did a good performance against Croatia. So we'll be back in a short break. Salford City Radio. City Radio. City Radio. City Radio. City Radio. And welcome back to the Salford City Sports Show. Uh, with myself, Jimmy Petruzzi, Clifford Tyrone, and we've got a special guest in today, uh, Ian, who's talking about his new concept, the Football Man Cave, and we've had uh, a, a, an amazing guest, uh, David Felgate. So we're going to sort of turn our attention now to international football, as you do. Um, lads, what's your take on the performance of the Clifford Ian? What, what do you think of the uh, England game? Did, did you... Managed to catch in the England game on the weekend against Croatia. Do you know what? I caught the first half, <laughs> and then I thought this is only going one way. Left it, and then uh, I looked back, and we were did two one up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. But do you know what? We played well that first half. We played really well. Yeah, and it's to come out of the traps ferociously. Yeah, the yeah. First, a surprise. What was nice was to compare how England have, have evolved over the last few months compared yeah. to when we played them in the big crunch semi-final and we started slow and got slower Yeah, and you can see that he has tweeted of course the formation is a starting point but we've definitely come on with Sancho has been introduced yeah. we've still got a problem with the midfield it seems it's Fabian Delph's the answer isn't he <laughs> <laughs> pinging balls left right and centre <laughs> D- Delph is a great player and, yeah. and, 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 and yeah. straight away you've got to ask yourself the, the question of English players only 30% of the Premier League is English yeah. he's a great example yeah. he's a talented player tenacious great long passer dribbler yeah uh, and he's not getting play regular games would you say he's a, he should be a starter for England 
I, on that performance, I in the, in that role, which was I've just been playing playing what, left back. What, yeah, left back. He's been playing left back, and then the, you would do you do anything for Pep. Yeah, <laughs> it's um, a man crush. If you get yeah. have a man crush, <laughs> it's stick, it's, yeah. But, but what, what what was his position for England? Where, what, was he was he holding? Was he a, a, a kind of holding he, he midfielder? Looked, he looked a bit just like get the ball and hmm. do what you want. It was I couldn't see him as like. I, so, I couldn't pin him to a certain position. When it's, whenever I seen him with a ball, it was a case of right, let's let's spread this, let's sort of play into the channels, let's let's get this team passing. And it, it was a great performance. Yeah. Let's pick our midfield three then now, because oh, that is no a way. problem area for England. Yeah, I mean we, we've had Henderson as captain. Yeah, and it, against Croatia, he was just trying to chase Modric and and and, and Rakitic and yeah, it, it's, hopelessly. So. Uh, it's hard to it's hard because in that in that formation where he's the pivot, yeah. it was a tough brief for him. But would you have him now in a four four three three? I don't know, me. I'm, I'm not I'm not overly keen on Henderson. I'm not overly keen on him. <sighs> uh, there's something about him. I feel like they just can't quite love him, can you? No, not because he plays for Liverpool. Yeah, that aside. <laughs> but there isn't. There's something about. I just I just always feel like he's he's got too much for points to prove, and he, I think he tries to overplay. He tries to play that long ball too much. He's yeah. he's trying to do too much in a game. What, so a pound shot, Gerard. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to say it, <laughs> but <laughs> but who's the three then? Because we, we want to be we're, we're, we're not world. We're not in contention quite yet to no. win the World Cup. But we've come great leaps and strides from over yeah. the last ten years. Yeah. And we're not too far away. We've got a great forward line, a great defence, yeah. a, a young, all young, but already very compelling. But the, that midfield. So who have we got? Delphi, you're right. He, he's a he's a talented player. He's, he's got to be in there. He? He's, he's yeah. got to be. He's got to be in with a shout. Yeah. Uh, it's all a case of if they can keep it up. Who, who have we got though? Who's um, it? Dia? D- 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 no, I, don't, I, don't. I mean, as a holding midfielder, you need someone like that. But again, not overly impressed. Um, it's it's a tough one. I, I really like Ruben. Loftus Cheek. Yeah, I do like. I really him. like him. He offers something we don't have, doesn't he? Yeah. You can't mm. knock him off the ball easily. No. Great Started scoring goals as well recently. He's another player that you'd love to see playing every week. Yeah, He's and, and that's, I think that's half the battle. Yeah, you know, if these players were playing regularly, yeah, it would help for sure. I, I think for me that you know there's certainly an abundance of talent in the England team. Um, you know, to to think that there, there's a a whole cluster of players you could play. I think the one thing that is lacking is a a player of the likes we sort of touched on this before as well there is no Messi no Ronaldo there isn't e- even a Modric so to speak someone who can really take the game and I think that you know, Southgate to be fair to him he does really really well he gets the best out of what he's got and, and I think that you've got a set of midfielders that on any given day if they play to their game uh, they're going to give anyone a game but yeah. the one thing that isn't there for me um, albeit against Croatia it was impressive to think that you know there wasn't long to go and they turned that around but the one thing I think that he's lacking at the moment is someone who can grab the ball and just take the game by the scruff of the neck and I think that could be Foden yeah, yeah well that, that's a few years off that yeah and that's the sort of thing that you know at, at the moment we can sort of speculate uh, there are a number of players and you know Ali looked like a player who was was on the right track and he's sort of you know he's, he's sort of in the periphery he's, he's, he's not consistently done it um, you've mentioned Delft there. You've mentioned a number of players. You know Henderson for me. Yeah, definitely. You know he can he can he can play a role. He can spray the ball a bit about. But reality is, is that is there anyone that can do a performance like say a Modric did in the World Cup yeah. centre stage against England in the semi final? Is there anyone that can do what a Messi does or Ronaldo does? Just take a game and control it. And I think at the moment there really isn't. So Southgate's kind of stuck with sort of playing you know three or four. Uh, in the middle to, to, to try and overrun teams. The one thing they have got is pace and power, yeah. and that's massive, for sure. Massive pace um, and power. I, I, yeah. I, what was encouraging, and I don't mind holding my hands up because I, I wasn't his biggest fan in the summer uh, uh, for uh, all of the achievements of England. I think the English mentality was brilliant, brilliant, but we had a chance there to get to the final. Yeah. Uh, and I thought he was, he was too hesitant, too restricted. He played the same team all the time. Uh, he didn't, uh, in game management wasn't good, but. I've got to give it to him. He's really evolved. He's yeah. changed his formation. Uh, he brought an attacking substitutions, which we all wanted to see in the World Cup. So, a uh, good point is he's learning as well, and he's yeah. evolving, and, 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 and he's really growing in stature. He is. I, I've, I've, I was all for the Southgate appointment mm-hmm. because what he did with under 21s mm-hmm. and straight away bringing that youth in because we were so reliant on like the 
late twenties, early thirties mm. players, yeah. and someone had to come in and just go right. This is what we're doing, and, and starting new. That was stale, wasn't it? Yeah. That was stale for at least eight just, years. There, it yeah. was just nothing. It, yeah, no, I, I, I gotta admit, like you know, I, I sort of I hold my hands up. I thought that he'd done his job at the World Cup, and it's probably time to to move on and let a more expansive manager come in. But to be fair to him, you know. He's he's done well since the World Cup. He's he's looked to play different. He's 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 trying new ideas, different formations. Um, you know, fair play to him, and 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 long may it continue for him. I think for me, the big test will come is in uh, a major tournament. I mean, you know, there's no, there's no easy games in international football. There's no real friendlies really in that respect. Players play their heart out no matter what the game is. But we know that sort of edge. And the big test for me will be in the qualifications, and and you'd like to think we'll, we'll get through to the Euros, the European Cup. Let's sort of see what happens then. And and you know, I think for me, it's a bit like the the comparison I make is there's some similarities there with the 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 the, the, the run that uh, Coleman had with the, the the Welsh team at the Euros. And they got to the semis, and obviously it's a whole different ball game. But then afterwards, things kind of went a little bit yeah. stuck. And that's the key thing for me doing it uh, tournament back to back that's going to be a big thing for me um, can he maintain momentum obviously England's got a lot more uh, playing depth than Wales that's for sure that said you know um, the you know as much as there is depth too there are players like you say Zine, that aren't playing every week and irrespective of how good you are as a player if you're not playing every week in my book you've got to step up the international level yeah. you're going to be found wanting that's for sure and I think that's going to be his biggest challenge get these players playing in every week but I think what he's done really well he's not gone for players on name or which club they're playing for you know he's yeah. gone to Bournemouth he's gone to clubs that the less nationalable clubs and got players on form and I've always been a big advocate to pick players on form not reputation not what they've done not dining on yesterday what they're doing now and I think that's a big thing about Southgate he knows these players he's been there for a long time and, and he's probably the right person at the right time but yeah. Let's see you next tournament. What's, what happens then? That's the one. Is there anyone in the lower leagues that's caught your eye? There, a young kid that might just be able to make it in this thirteen teams within this great Manchester area. No, 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 no. No one's. I mean, you've got. Um, they get snapped Adam, up early as yeah, well, now, don't they? Cause Adam Morgan, business. when I went down to watch Curzon, he really impressed me. He used to um, play for Liverpool. 